Hi everyone, this is Kavya from Edureka. Welcome to today's session on PMBOK 7 tutorial. So if there's anything that you need to know about PMBOK the 7th edition, this is definitely the right place. Before we get started, I'd like to address the agenda. Firstly, we will understand what is the PMBOK guide and also its purpose. Then we'll move ahead and understand the various factors influencing PMBOK 7. What are the changes that have been implemented in PMBOK 7? That is, how is its structure different from the previous editions? Then we'll talk about the 12 project principles in PMBOK 7 and also its performance domains. We will also understand what is standards plus. Then we'll move ahead and talk about some of the additional topics that have been incorporated in the PMBOK 7, that is tailoring models, methods, and artifacts. We'll conclude this session by discussing the PMP certification and is it relevant with the PMBOK 7 edition? So without much ado, let's get started. So firstly, we will have to understand what is the PMBOK guide, right? So the Project Management Institute offers a professional certification for project managers and it is known as the Project Management Professional, that is PMP certification. PMI's professional certification examination development processes stand apart from other project management certification examination development practices. So the PMI, that is the Project Management Institute, has released PMBOK Guide version 7. And this all began way back in the summer of 1969 when the Project Management Institute, that is PMI, was founded by a group of people. And ever since they've been releasing the PMBOK guides. Okay, currently there are six PMBOK guides and the seventh one is releasing on August 1st, 2021. PMI's research found that in past 10 years, technology and software are driving innovation and they are also creating new business models and new ways of working. There is a stronger focus on outcomes now than deliverables. The seventh edition of the guide builds on the standard and is structured not only around knowledge areas and ITTOs, but around project performance domains, which are a group of related activities that are very, very critical for the effective delivery of project outcomes. So it's not just solely focused on project delivery, but it is also focused on the project outcomes. So the PMBOK guide are relevant to the changing dynamics of the project management professionals. So now let's move on to the next part of the session and understand the purpose of PMBOK. So the PMI's project management body of knowledge or PMBOK guide has two parts. The first part is the standard for project management. PMI, that is the Project Management Institute, has affirmed that it will continue its affiliation with two standard bodies, that is ISO and American National Standards Institute, that is ANSI. As with previous PMBOK guides, PMBOK 7 will contain PMI standard for project management. The second part is a guide to the project management body of knowledge, a collation of what PMI considers to be the core body of knowledge it expects all professional project managers to know. Until now, it has been the basis for its principal examinations and qualifications, project management professional and certified associate in project management. In the future, it will be more of a framework for applying the standard with a wide range of knowledge that PMI will store in its new online repository that is PMI Standards Plus. We will be talking about PMI Standard Plus later on in the session. So the fundamental purpose of the PMBOK guide is to recognize and explain generally accepted knowledge and systems that can be applied to the projects. The PMBOK guide is basically a subset of the project management body of knowledge that is generally recognized as a very good practice. Now let's move ahead and talk about the various factors influencing PMBOK. Now, primarily, as you might have guessed in the view of the new syllabus introduced in 2019, the agile and hybrid project management approach make their way to mainstream content of the guide along with the existing predictive delivery approach. But this is not the fundamental change influencing PMBOK. The seventh version moves away from a process oriented approach to principles oriented, or you could even say outcome oriented approach thus supporting any type of project delivery. You guessed it right, 
the word principles has a stamp of agile paradigm. You could also say the thinking from which PMBOK comes now has been shifted. It has become much, much broader. Also, another marked change is a shift in scope to address project delivery in addition to project management. This idea seems to be more action focused or practitioner friendly. Also, the focus is on project outcomes than just the project deliverables. One could say that PMBOK scope is not widened to not just include the project management approaches, but also focus is also widened to include the project outcomes. So it's not just about delivery. It is also about the outcomes. There are two fundamental aspects influencing changes in the PMBOK seventh guide. The first one is value delivery system. Let's talk more about this. Okay, the value delivery system is the holistic system through which projects really deliver business value. Business value is the tangible and intangible benefits received by customers, employees, and even the partners of the business. And you must be aware that projects are basically the main vehicle that delivers business value by achieving business objectives of the organization. The seventh edition of standard for project management on which PMBOK is based shows how good strategy really leads to intended business value in the organization. This is done through defining organizational strategies that really help identify business objectives, which then turn into actionable initiatives such as portfolios, programs, projects, which produce deliverables and increase capabilities of the organization. This also produces tangible or intangible outcomes, thus creating benefits for the customers and end users which eventually turn business value produced by the organization. So what this system really does is it enables this flow in a very smooth and a very predictive manner that would be a very great value to the organization. And this is made possible by the efficient propagation of information and feedback through the predefined channels. The value delivery system comprises portfolios, programs, projects, operations, and also uses a system to manage several issues that you may encounter. It also enables workflows. It also allows you to make decisions. The second factor that is influencing is project delivery principles. Now, project delivery principles in short are the what's and why's of project management that guide the thinking and behavior of people involved in project delivery. So they can really apply their efforts towards a strong project outcome. The PMBOK 7 not only focuses on the delivery part, but it also focuses on the outcomes, right? So this is where the delivery principles comes into the picture. And there are 12 principles that are defined in the standard for project management. We'll be talking about each of these in detail. So now that we know what are the two factors that really influence the PMBOK guide, let's move ahead and talk about the primary change in the PMBOK 7. So firstly, the structure of PMBOK 7 has been changed completely. So in the seventh edition, the guide will focus mainly on the performance domains. So we have tailoring, we have models, methods and artifacts, and there are eight performance domains that have been put under the spotlight. So when you compare this to the sixth edition, the primary focus was just on 49 processes categorized under 10 knowledge areas. But now what they've done is they want you to really focus on these performance domains and work towards it. We'll be talking about tailoring models, methods and artifacts and also the eight performance domains in detail in the next part of the session. So before we move on and talk about the performance domains and models, methods and artifacts and tailoring. Firstly, we will have to address the project principles in PMBOK 7. As I've already mentioned, there are 12 project principles. So by now you must Know that the five changes that have been implemented is firstly, principles will replace processes. In the sixth edition, you had processes. In the seventh edition, you'll have principles. And then you have performance domains, which will replace knowledge areas. There'll be a whole new section on tailoring. The seventh guide will also introduce models, methods, and artifacts. And there will be a new section on the value delivery system. Okay. So there are basically three general approaches that organizations like Project Management Institute can use to document the standards. The first one is narrative based standards, which use storytelling and description. This is not very rigorous and it's not very informative. The second one is the process based standards, which is basically documents a set of processes that together deliver the desired outcomes. 
The third one is principle-based standards that are built around a set of statements of fundamental principles. They aim to capture and summarize broadly agreed approaches to best practices within core areas. PMBOK 7 and all the previous editions have clearly taken a process-based approach, but the 7th edition, which is a very special edition, will create a principle-based standard. So let us understand firstly what is principle-based standard. Principles are basically statements of standards of morale and ethical conduct. And they are also statements of widely agreed assumptions or truths and fundamental laws of rules. Well, they will mostly be subjective matters of judgment. Useful principles will be those that gain wide, near universal acceptance among a relevant community of practitioners. So finally, let us check out these 12 really, really important principles in the PMBOK 7. So the first one is stewardship which is to be diligent, respectful, and a caring steward. The second one is team, which means that you should build a culture of accountability and respect. The third one is stakeholders, which engage stakeholders to understand the interests and needs. The fourth one is value, which basically focuses on value. The fifth one is holistic thinking, which recognizes and responds to systems interactions. The sixth one is leadership, which means that motivate, influence, coach, and learn. The seventh one is tailoring, which means that tailor the delivery approach based on context. The eighth one is quality, build quality into processes and results. The ninth one is complexity, which means address complexity using knowledge, experience, and learning. The tenth one is opportunities and threats. That means that address opportunities and threats. The eleventh one is adaptability and resilience. Be adaptable and resilient. And the twelfth and the last principle is change management, which means that you will have to enable change to achieve the envisioned future state. So now that we have discussed the twelve project principles of PMBOK seven, let's move ahead and talk about the eight project performance domains. So firstly, we will have to understand what the project management performance domains really mean. They're just complementary groupings of related areas of activity or function that uniquely categorize and differentiate the activities found in one performance domain from the others within the full scope of program management work. You can just think of performance domains as the broad areas that we must focus on. They must necessarily overlap. This is because projects are extremely complex and we need to integrate each of these parts. But each represents a substantial element of our work that we will be focusing on. So the first project domain is team. The second one is stakeholders. And we have the third one, which is life cycle. The fourth one is planning. The fifth one is navigating uncertainty and ambiguity. The sixth one is delivery. The seventh one is performance. And the last one is project work. So now that we've also covered what are the eight important performance domains in PMBOK 7, let us understand this new reference that has been incorporated with the PMBOK 7th, which is the Standards Plus. As a project management practitioner or someone with educational or research interest, Standards Plus is a way to quickly refer to project management institutes, standards, and guides. PMI states that Standards Plus was created specifically to help you apply the standard to your work. So what this digital platform that is Standards Plus really does is it connects PMBOK to content specifically created to help practitioners implement standards at work. Standards Plus has tons of content in the easy to consume formats such as articles, videos, audios and downloadable templates. You can search for areas that you need help with at your job or when you're working and find the relevant content. The beauty of this is that you will be able to refer to a specific part of PMBOK for every content you find and you will be able to put PMI standards to work. This way you will have direct access to the best practices from the trenches and be sure of getting the best results at work. You can also understand how these standards apply to the specific industry you work in. And finally, Standard Plus also gives you an opportunity to learn all about agile project management practices. Now, let's move ahead to the next part of the session and understand tailoring methods. 
So tailoring methods is outlined in the PMBOK guide seventh edition has basically four steps. The first step is to select initial development approach. Here you will be able to choose a development approach best suited to the endeavor. The second step is tailor for organization. Here you will have to modify based on organizational requirements. The third step is to tailor for project. That is, you'll have to adjust based on size, criticality and other factors. The fourth one is implement ongoing improvement. Here you will inspect and adapt continuously. Okay. Now that we've also addressed what is tailoring methods, let's move on and talk about models, methods and artifacts. So PMBOK 7 will introduce a section that lists common models, methods and artifacts available to project practitioners. It will really give you a brief description of each model, method or artifact and it will map them to one or more of the project performance domains where the author suggests it might be most applicable or useful. The first one is model. We'll understand each of these in detail. So a model really describes a thinking strategy to explain a process framework or a phenomena. Examples may include situational readership, Tuckman and the process groups. The second one is methods. A method here means that you will have to achieve an outcome, result or project deliverable. Examples include lessons learned, planning poker, risk matrix. The third one is an artifact, which is a template, document, output or project deliverable. Examples include risk registers, scope management plans, stakeholder engagement plan models, methods and artifacts explainer. So this is something of an expansion of the ITTOs of earlier PMBOK guides, but it will take the idea far further, contextualizing them to project type, industry, sector and development approach. As a result, this is a very welcome upgrade. ITTOs will remain available through the PMI Standards Plus website and the models will also include the process groups from former PMBOK guides. Now let's move on to the last part of the session, PMP and PMBOK. PMBOK 6 will remain a key reference for the PMP exam and when the PMI revises the PMP exam, probably in a few years, they will then use the PMBOK 7 as source of knowledge in developing the syllabus. The PMBOK guide will release on August 1st, 2021 and it is available on their official website that is the PMI website and also on websites like Amazon. PMP certification has a tremendous impact on the ability to perform one's job effectively as well as increasing one's value in the market. If you are eligible to take the exam, Prepare to take it in the current format. Edureka's PMP online course gives you an extensive knowledge of project management concepts highlighted in the PMBOK Guide 6th edition and is aligned with the latest PMP exam outline content. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead and register today. With this, we come to the end of today's session. If you have any queries, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Until next time, thank you.